Greetings everyone. Welcome to today's PYQ session focusing on Unit 6 specifically targeting 6D that is plant hormones. This topic holds significant importance as questions from this area frequently appears in part C of the exam. So, what kind of questions you can expect in part C? Either it could be in the form of match the following or it could be a statement based question. So, without further delay, let's look up into the questions. So, the very first question is, a, is in the form of match the following. So, it is divided into three columns. We have column 1 about plant hormones. The column 2 is about the corresponding receptors and column 3 about the kind of response that you can obtain through the signaling pathway. So, what is the correct answer over here? The correct answer is option 2. So, auxin and ghibellines have soluble receptors which will generate response by means of proteasomal mediated protein degradation. Whereas cytokinin and brassinosteroids, they have transmembrane receptors whose response can be mediated by phosphorylation or dephosphorylation event. So let's check it out how exactly it works. Always remember when it comes to signaling pathway, what is the ligand, what is the corresponding receptor is very important along with their location. What is the transcription factor and what is the repressor? So, these are the content you must remember for each and every hormone. So, when it comes to uh, your auxin, jasmonate or gibberlic acid, remember it is present in the nucleus. When it comes to cytokinin and ethylene, present in the endoplasmic reticulum. Abscisic acid, they have their receptors in the membrane as well as in the cytoplasm. Brassinosteroids, yes, their receptors are present in the membrane. So, this has to be clear at first. Next, we are having the auxin signaling pathway. So, here ARF is the transcription factor and aux IAA serves both as a repressor as well as early response genes. So, when auxin is not present, the repressor inhibits the transcription factor. But when the auxin comes and binds to the corresponding receptor, the aux IAA will be ubiquitinated and targeted for proteasomal degradation. Whereas ARF will undergo dimerization that in turn will give rise to the auxin re response gene expression. Now, when we look into the Ghibelline signaling pathway. Here also the ligand that is the ghibelline goes and binds to the corresponding receptor. That will in turn will activate a G protein. This G protein can activate two pathways. Calcium dependent pathway, calcium independent pathway. So calcium dependent pathway directly helps in the release of alpha amylase that is starch degradation in endosperm. Whereas calcium independent pathway, what happens is that once your gibberlic acid is activated, they will enter inside the nucleus. Della is the repressor over here. So it will be targeted for degradation by ubiquitination. So once the repressor is degraded, gamib gene, which will be a transcription factor, can be activated. So, they will undergo transcription, protein synthesis, enters inside the nucleus, sits in the promoter region of alpha amylase gene, thereby producing alpha amylase mRNA. After that, corresponding proteins will be synthesized that will be secreted out. When it comes to cytokinin signaling pathway, we have cytokinin going and binding to the chase domain of the receptor that is CRE1. Since it is a two component system, so first the histidine kinase domain will be autophosphorylated, transferring the phosphate to the aspartate residue on the receiver domain. That in turn will transfer the phosphate to Arabidopsis protein 
that is we call it as a pseudo hps now this ahp will be diffused into the nucleus the phosphorylated ahp and will transfer the phosphate to two type b arr and type a rr we know that type a activates the type b in fact this is considered to be a regulator so type b in turn can activate the genes for gene transcription that is generating cytokinin response also it will activate type a rrr to generate the response so basically here phosphorylation plays the role next we have brassinosteroid signaling so when the brassinolite that is the ligand goes and binds to the corresponding receptor the receptor will undergo phosphorylation that in turn will activate a kinase known as bsk which in turn will activate a phosphatase the phosphatase will remove the phosphate from bin2 so bin2 becomes free enters inside the nucleus and it will be phosphorylated phosphorylating the transcription factors so if bin2 is degraded that means if the phosphate is removed bin2 will be degraded see d dephosphorylated bin2 is degraded by the proteasome system in that case what happens the transcription factors will be free and they are responsible for carrying out the corresponding gene expression depending upon the requirement of plants so that's why we have mentioned here that auxin and gibberellin will generate the response by means of proteasomal mediated protein degradation whereas cytokinin and brassinosteroid will generate the response by means of phosphorylation dephosphorylation event moving on to our next question this is about hormone that is ethylene dark green arabidopsis seed seedlings when exposed to ethylene gas shows typical triple response so you have to be clear with the triple response generated by the plant and these are the statements regarding the same a dominant ethylene receptor mutant will not show triple response in the presence of ethylene tightening of epical hook is one of the feature of triple response loss of function of multiple receptors will show triple response even in the absence of ethylene increase in hypocotyl length is a feature of a triple response so you have to identify the correct combination over here so the correct combination is a b and c so tightening of the epical hook is the correct answer because it is one of the feature of a triple response whereas increase in hypocotyl length is not a feature in fact here it should be decrease or reduce hypocotyl length is a feature of triple response now let's check out the other options i mean the other statements so we have four types of model representing the ethylene receptor and their corresponding response so usually when a ligand goes and binds to the receptor the receptor is activated to generate the cellular response but in case of ethylene it's a other way around that means when ethylene is present the receptor is inactive then only cellular response will be generated if ethylene is not present receptor is active so there won't be any cellular response this is a unique concept to be remember so as we can see four models if ethylene goes and binds to the corresponding receptor the receptor is inactive so we can get ethylene response but if all the receptors there is no ethylene is present then what happens receptors are active if receptors are active it will suppress the ethylene response in the third model if one of the receptor has underwent the mesens mutation 
then what happens the active receptor the receptor will be activated but it will not generate any kind of response and in the fourth model the regulatory subunit of all the receptors are interrupted so in that case what happens whether the ethylene present or not present they will generate constitutive ethylene response so based on this the other two statements are correct moving on to the last question so this is a combination question in where uh, you will find all the hormones majority of hormones are involved so you can get questions uh focusing on a single hormone statement based questions or a miscellaneous hormone statement based question so this is an example of miscellaneous hormones ethylene regulates abscission gibberellins do not play any role in flowering auxin and cytokinin promote cell division over expression of cytokinin oxidase would promote root growth Abscisic acid inhibits the root growth and promotes the shoot growth at low water potential. Abscisic acid promotes leaf senescence independent of ethylene. Here also you need to identify the correct combination of statements. So the correct combinations are statement 1, 3 and 6. Ethylene regulates the abscission yes along with auxin or in fact i can say auxin ethylene both are the regulators in abscission zone auxin and cytokinin promote cell division yes auxin is involved the proper balance of the hormones is involved in root formation as well as shoot formation then abscisic acid will be uh, inhibi will be promoting the leaf senescence independent of ethylene no doubt ethylene also promotes uh, leaf senescence but abscisic acid individually can promote the senescence so let's check it out how the statements and what is the explanation of the statements are so ethylene biosynthesis in the abscission zone is regulated by auxin so we can see that we have three phases leaf maintenance phase where you will find higher levels of auxin is present so that maintains the green color of the leaves preventing the leaf abscission In the second phase that is abscission induction phase we will find that auxin level decreases ethylene level increases and finally in the abscission phase there will be synthesis of necessary enzymes that will degrade away the cell wall and finally it leads to yellowing and falling of the leaves so basically ethylene and auxin both are considered to be two primary hormones involved in abscission then in many plants gibberellins will promote flowering by stimulating the expression of genes required for flower development gibberellins can also interact with auxin and cytokinin in order to regulate the transition from vegetative growth to reproductive growth apart from that gibberellins also influences the flowering time uh in affecting the expression of genes that are involved in photoperiodic responses or we can say vernalization that is cold treatment of plants so that's why statement b was incorrect then over expression of cytokinin oxidase would likely that it will inhibit the root growth rather than promote it now what happens here is cytokinin oxidase is an enzyme that are involved in the degradation of cytokinin and you know that degradation of cytokinin means it will be inhibiting the cell division and shoot growth because as i had mentioned already cytokinin and auxin are involved in root and shoot development so by increasing the activity of cytokinin oxidase there would be more rapid degradation of cytokinin leading to a reduction in their levels within the plants so that's why this statement is also incorrect then abscisic acid inhibits the root growth and promotes the shoot growth at low water potential partially the statement is correct how see no doubt that abscisic acid inhibits the root growth under low water potential so that it can conserve the water but when it comes to shoot growth it varies 
In terms of mild water stress, abscisic acid can promote the shoot growth by prioritizing the resource allocation for photosynthesis. But similarly, if, if it is severe stress condition, both root and shoot growth will be inhibited because plant will enter into the survival mode to conserve the necessary resources. And the last statement. Abscisic acid can promote leaf senescence in an ethylene independent manner. How? By activating a kinase known as sucrose non-fermenting 1 related protein kinase 2. Now this particular kinase will go and phosphorylate abscisic acid responsive element binding factor and Related to abscisic acid insensitive 3 bar VP1 transcription factors. So, what is the consequence of phosphorylating this transcription factors? It leads to certain changes in the gene expression, including upregulation of genes involved in leaf senescence. So, since this process occurs independently of ethylene signaling, so the statement is correct. So, I hope so. You got a good insight about the type of questions you can expect from plant hormones. So, prepare accordingly. Revise the hormonal part regular on a regular basis so that you will be confident on that. Thank you so much.